girls just want to have fun, right, Steve? They certainly do, John. <laughs> they certainly do. And so do boys. And we got a whole room full of boys. <laughs> yeah. Usually we have uh, women in here. Todd's always here Tuesday mornings. But uh, so we say good morning to Todd. And good morning, gentlemen. You've uh, brought a special guest, someone you talk about a lot on this show. Indeed. You know what? We are privileged today to have the one and only Fabio Kamanan joining us. He's a professor from San Diego State, longtime mentor and friend. He did the scientific review of caloric responsibility, the book for me. And you know what? It's opportunities like this where we can give your listeners some tips that really will change your life. There's no doubt. We've talked about this before. And when you talk about intermittent fasting and the benefits, you've really got to understand what that means and understand the science. And like most people, I hate, I hate the thought of missing a meal. Mm -hmm. I hate the thought of, you know what, you're going to starve. You're going to starve for 20 hours, 10 hours, whatever it may be. But when you look at the benefits, when you look at, you know, increasing cognitive abilities, optimizing metabolism, detoxing the body, there's all of these benefits. And today we just really wanted to unpack those benefits a little bit more. So to do that, let's bring the one and only Fabio Kamanen on the air. (laughs) Fabio. Thank you, James. Thanks for having me here. Nice to have you in. Good to see you again. I think this is the second time, right? I believe so, You've been here, yeah. Yeah. So how's the weather in San Diego? I've got to ask you that. Well, it's hot and sunny as usual. Yeah, a little warmer. But this is a nice change of pace. Well, sure it is. Kind of nice. There's no... Okay, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Hey, so Todd, I'm going to piggyback. I'm going to actually just, uh, you know, play devil's advocate. You know, we do hate to miss a meal, but you know what? We also hate planning every meal we eat. Mm -hmm. It's true. Sometimes we want to just eat. You know, I always say, do you live to eat or eat to live. We've got to do a little bit of both, right? So the idea of dieting where you've got to plan every meal and it's going to be very restrictive. You're trying to manage a family, trying to manage your kids. The last thing you want to do at the end of a busy day is to come home and try and start planning your own special meal because you have to eat something special that your family can't. Mm -hmm. So intermittent fasting has gained a lot of popularity and I think it is a great solution, especially for a Gen Xer who's trying to manage a life, a job, a family, kids. This makes things simple and I love simplicity. So the idea of intermittent fasting is this, you know, rather than planning your food for every single day, for five days of the week, and the one I like is called a 5-2 model, and it's a modified 5-2 model. What I mean by that is for five days of the week, you just generally eat what you normally eat. So you can go out to dinner with your friends. You know, Mm -hmm. we just want you to be a little bit more mindful. So maybe it's not about, you know, counting calories and measuring portions. You just are a little bit more conscientious about what you're eating. Maybe Mm -hmm. cut back a little bit on this have a little less ice cream for dessert. But for the two days is where we kind of go for the the calorie gain, gain to kind of get you that weight loss. So what we do is we don't starve you. Absolutely not suggesting we starve. But what we do is we restrict your calories on those days. And the way we do it is we do it very carefully. You're coming out of sleep. Last thing you want to do is starve yourself. Your body needs energy first thing in the morning. So typically what we do is we give you a small meal. 20 to 25 grams of carbs. That could be as much as a banana. It could be, you know, eight ounces of orange juice, something like that. And a little bit of protein, maybe an egg, Mm -hmm. right? Or maybe we could take a slice of toast with some peanut butter, something simple, just to kind of get you out of that fast. They call it breakfast for a reason, right? There you go. (laughs) Yeah. And then what we do for the rest of the day is we just break up your day into maybe several small feedings, maybe just three meals through the day where they're really small, maybe about 200 calories each. And what we do there is we just focus primarily on protein, high protein and high fat. Reason being is that's going to fill your tummy and it's going to help suppress your desire to eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to be a little hungry on that day. But the key thing on that day is not to exercise. So that's your day off, which mm-hmm. probably most of us can use. So what we're doing is we're kind of mapping your nutritional intake with your exercise routine. So we choose two days, non-consecutive days. And guess what? They don't have to be the same two days every week. This fits your lifestyle. So you could say Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to eat my normal way. Wednesday, I'm going to go into a little bit of fast, a little bit of breakfast, Three small little meals through the day, maybe 150 to 200 calories each through the day. Mm-hmm. Just we try and cut the carbs on those, on those three meals. And then, you know, the next day, go back to normal meal. Don't bounce back. Don't overeat the next day. Just go back to normal eating. And let's say this week it was, uh, you know, Wednesday, Saturday. But next week you've got, kid, you know, kids, neighbor, you know, neighbors, kids coming over for dinner. You change the days. But it's just a simple way because we can still get to that caloric number that we're looking to achieve to help you lose weight loss, but we can do it in a much more, you know, or much less complicated manner. And that's really the idea behind it. Simplify. So Fabio, let's really unpack the science a little bit because the concept, like you said, it's, it's in the forefront right now. 
But you know what? We know it increases overall health. We know you can detox the the body. You can help reduce caloric intake by up to 600 calories, right? Or maybe a little bit more. more. Promotes thermogenesis, speeds up metabolism, and it also reduces inflammation. And if you go online, there's, you know, another 30 items it does. But let's stick with those basics and just help us understand the science. Okay, let's let's peel back all those big words. Those are some very fancy (laughs) words there. Let's kind of dummy this thing down. So, number one, we know that if people can manage to eat slightly less calories, not starving themselves... It generally improves their health. Sure. We are a society that overeats and that leads to a lot of diseases. And Todd Mm -hmm. mentioned inflammation. Mm -hmm. Most of our diseases today, think of it, hypertension, you know, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, they're all triggered usually by an inflammatory process. Mm -hmm. So by restricting calories or reducing calories, I should correct myself, reducing calories, not restricting calories. We are starting to do what? Put you on a path of, of being healthier overall. All right. Number two, people generally think, well, I got to eat less to lose weight. So they starve themselves. Well, that actually slows down your metabolism Mm -hmm. because think of it. Our bodies were designed for feast or famine. Mm -hmm. And our ancestors, when they didn't have food, had to preserve energy in order to survive. Mm -hmm. So much like your car, when you're running out of gas, you don't just keep driving like a madman. You slow down a little bit. That's what our metabolism does too. So when you start starving yourself, you're going to slow down metabolism, which is going to make weight loss even harder. Mm-hmm. So the idea behind intermittent fasting is just to do what? Eat normally most of the time. And on certain days, we tend to do what? We do put you into that little restriction, but it's a little short-term version. And we do what? We intentionally taper down your exercise on that day to stop that loss from happening. And the people, when they also don't realize is that when you don't eat, one of the things you lose is the energy cost to chew food, swallow food, digest, and absorb food. Mm-hmm. So if you decide just to skip you know, or starve yourself, you're losing that energy loss too, that energy cost too. But if we put you into little fasting periods through the day, you can actually get a little bit of a spike of energy every time you've finished eating a meal. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win for everything. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry about planning every damn diet, every damn meal. <laughs> it makes sense. For it, sure. It's absolutely amazing, you guys, because normally when our clients use this, and there's different versions of it. We use five 100-calorie meals. Fabio referred to three 200-calorie meals. You get that increase in metabolism. You get that increase in metabolic rate where you actually feel better, you're lighter, your body's detoxing. You know what? And, and Fabio just expanded on this. I mean, people go... Well, you know, I hate dieting because I'm starving. The caloric responsibility platform is not a diet. In fact, most people, John, Steve, you guys can attest to this, you're complaining because it's too much food, yeah, right? Yeah. But that promotes metabolism. And Fabio mentioned this before, you miss one meal, that can slow your metabolism by 18 to 22%. Right? So you, you would only do that fast on one day? You would never do two days you of do, day off you do, in a row? Exactly. You would never do two consecutive days. No, the whole idea is to kind of just kind of get that big chunk of calories you're trying to, you know, you're trying to, you know, sort of eliminate from your diet. You just right. target it on one day, then resume your normal life. Right. So you do it on two non-consecutive days. And generally, I'd like to space two days in between it. So maybe a Monday and a Thursday, think Wednesday, Saturday, whatever fits your schedule. So fewer calories and no exercise on those days. Exactly. Outside of your normal yeah. so walking to work. Let's just say you were someone eating, you know, 2,500 calories in a day. Not that I'm going to ask you to go count calories. Right. This is a day that I'd probably drop you down to about 25% of your calories. So that's always a good guide. If you're about 2,500 calories, let's get you down to about, you know, sort of 600 calories or so. And you do a little bit for breakfast, maybe 150 calories. And then the rest of the calories, you just kind of divvy it up through the day, maybe three meals or five meals. And you make sure that they're very high in fat and protein because that keeps your tummy full and helps suppress your appetite. Right. So that's just a simple way of going okay. about it. And that, that's a day that you say, I'm taking my day off from exercise. Now, I would assume that these are quality calories, not, not like a cheeseburger no. or something. <laughs> no. We would like it to be ideally, again, you know, if we have the choice, we want to aim for leaner proteins and healthier fats. I mean, that would be ideal, but, you know, so it's, it's a path. So everyone's got to start somewhere. Just work towards that. Don't just kind of try and jump ship immediately. Healthy fats being, just throw a few out. Um, you know, healthy fats would generally be, you know, things that are, nuts. you know. Yeah, nuts, seeds would be good right. ones. You know, more of your vegetable-based oils mm-hmm. rather, than your, rather than your, you know, your burger fats. Okay. Yes. And, yeah, I mean, ideally, try to limit the amount of saturated fats you're getting. Yeah. And there are some exceptions. MCTs, medium chain triglycerides are amazing. But, you know, <laughs> if you can See? avoid the... Fabio's waving at him because uh, he's MCTs, using words yeah. nobody yeah, they knows. Are, right, Dazzle folks. them with brilliance or baffle them with... with, <laughs> with, with BS. Yeah, See, right. he's a teacher. He, knows. he is a teacher. I get called on him often, you I'll don't, tell you. Don't use stuff nobody understands. All right. Well, healthy fats are good. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> Raw fats, you know, 
polyunsaturated. Well, we don't even want to do that. We don't, don't want to go there. Just, just look at more your fats. Raw. You know, if you're choosing your animal sources, look for the lean sources like you know your skim milks, your your low fat milks. If you were going for your meats and that, just you know go like the chicken breast. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, fish is always going to have healthy fats, even though sure. they are fatty. Yeah. But then a lot of your vegetable oils. I mean, I'm not going to say every vegetable oil, but that would be a great place to start. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Great segment. Gentlemen, it was. A pleasure nice, was all ours. Nice to have you in here. Thank and, you for having me. And thank you for the eye roll and the wave at him <laughs> oh. when he pulled out the MCT. Because <laughs> oh, we've go. been on him for years yeah. about that. To Thanks dumb very you much. Down. And Keep it's great, have, great having you Thanks, here. Thanks, Jens. Appreciate it. All right. It. We'll check weather next. One. Weather next.